The Apache Longbow The Hind Incredible attack helicopters that will make their way to DCS world this year. Proven in battle and highly recognized around the world, their pure presence on the battlefield can deter any opponent to even think of an attack. Tonight, these iconic helicopters are put side by side as we take a closer look at what we can expect from them in DCS world. It'll give you a good perspective, a better understanding and some good knowledge about these magnificent machines. This and more on How I Play. Hello Virtual Pilots, I am Andre Celesti and tonight we are going to focus on two upcoming modules for DCS World, each of them slated for this year and bringing more content to the world of attack helicopters in the simulator. And we will start with the iconic Boeing AH-64D, better known as the Apache Longbow. The AH-64D is an American twin turboshaft attack helicopter with a tailwheel type landing gear arrangement and a tandem cockpit for a crew of two. It is powered by two General Electric T700 turboshaft engines with high mounted exhausts on either side of the fuselage, featuring a nose mounted sensor suit for target acquisition and night vision systems. The Apache is armed with a 30mm chain gun positioned between the main landing gear under the aircraft's forward fuselage, plus four hard points mounted on stub wing pylons for carrying armament and stores, with a mixture of AGM-114 Hellfire missiles and Hydra-70 rocket pods. The AH-64 was designed to perform in frontline environments and to operate in the day or night and during adverse weather conditions. One of the revolutionary features of the Apache is its helmet-mounted display, called the I-Hats. The pilot or gunner can slate the helicopter's 30mm automatic chain gun to their helmet, making the gun track head movements to point where they look. Longbow-equipped Apaches can locate up to 256 targets simultaneously within 31 miles with the help of the FCR a millimeter wave fire control radar and a radar frequency interferometer or RFI housed in a dome located above the main rotor. The dome being in a raised position enables targets detection while the helicopter is behind obstacles like terrain, trees or buildings. The AN-APG-78 is capable of simultaneously tracking up to 128 targets and engaging up to 16 at once. An attack can be initiated within 30 seconds. Also, using a radio modem integrated with a sensor suit allows data to be shared with ground units and other Apaches. This allows them to fire on targets detected by a single helicopter. And to put it in perspective, an 18 aircraft Apache battalion can carry 288 Hellfire missiles, each capable in destroying a tank. Starting in the 1980s, the Stinger and AIM-9 Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles and the AGM-122 Sidearm anti-radiation missiles were evaluated for use upon the AH-64. The Stinger was initially selected, but the US Army was also considering the Starstreak air-to-air -air missile. Since 2005, the Hellfire is sometimes outfitted with a thermobaric warhead, designated AGM-114N. It is intended for use against ground forces and urban warfare operations, and it's very deadly. In October 2015, the US Army ordered its first batch of Advanced Precision Kill Weapon System 70mm guided rockets for the Apache. The forward fuselage expansion was made to accommodate new systems that improve survivability, navigation and tactical internet communication capabilities. I think it will even run Netflix. Does anyone know? Ok, let's move on. External fuel tanks can also be carried on the stub wings to increase range and mission time. The pylons have mounting points for maintenance access. These can also be used to secure personnel externally for emergency transport. Stinger missiles are often used on non-US Apaches, as foreign forces do not have as many air superiority aircraft to control the skies. Now the US Army is the primary operator of the AH-64 Apache, but it also has become the primary attack helicopter of multiple nations including Greece, Japan, Israel, the Netherlands, Singapore and the United Arab Emirates. The American Apaches have served in conflicts in Panama, the Persian Gulf, Kosovo, Afghanistan and Iraq. Israel uses the Apache in its military conflicts in Lebanon and the Gaza Strip. British and Dutch Apaches have seen deployments in wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. 
The DCS World Pre-Order for the Apache Longbow was expected to be in the first week of May 2021. So it seems we need to wait a little more, but we are on the prowl and ready to get more information about it when available. With the Apache we will be able to fly reconnaissance missions, night attack operations, full-scale invasions and even border patrol duty. And just adding the multi-crew experience in the mix and you got yourself a great module for rotor enthusiasts and others alike. So that was our presentation for the Apache Longbow. And I must say there is a lot more to add and we will provide enough material once we get in the cockpit of this attack helicopter. But for now we need to move on to the module that is coming very soon to DCS World, none other than the MIL MI-24, the Hind. A Russian twin turboshaft attack helicopter fitted with a retractable tricycle undercarriage landing gear and a tandem cockpit for a crew of two. It is powered by two Isotov TV3 117 turboshaft engines at 1600 kilowatts each. The Hind is a large helicopter gunship fitting the role as a fast attack helicopter and low capacity troop transport with room for eight passengers. It is produced by Mil Moskov helicopter plant and has been operated since 1972 by the Soviet Air Force and its successors, along with 48 other nations and the primary user today being the Russian Air Force. The core of the aircraft was derived from the Mil Mi-8, NATO reporting name HIP. It's that so? How interesting. The engine configuration gave the aircraft its distinctive double air intake. Two mid-mounted stub wings provide weapons hardpoints, each offering three stations in addition to providing lift. The loadout mix is mission dependent. The Mi-24s can be tasked with close air support, anti-tank operations or aerial combat. A representative mix when targeting armor formations will be 8 86 80 GMs, 750 30mm rounds and two 57mm rocket pods. The aircraft can store an additional ammunition basic load in the cargo compartment so that the crew could land and self-reload in the field. The Mi-24 could carry 10 100kg iron bombs for attacks on camps or strong points while harder targets could be dealt with a load of 4 250kg or 2 500kg iron bombs. The Mi-24's favorite munition was the 80mm S8 rocket and the 23mm gun pod. The fuselage is armored and can resist impacts from 12.7mm rounds from all angles. The titanium rotor blades are resistant as well to incoming fire. The cockpit is protected by ballistic resistant windscreens and a titanium armored top. Also it's overpressurized together with a crew compartment to protect in case of chemical, biological, radiological or nuclear warfare conditions. A considerable attention was given to making the Mi-24 fast. The airframe was streamlined and at high speed the wings provide considerable lift between 22 to 28 percent in forward flight. The main rotor was tilted 2.5 degrees to the right from the fuselage to compensate from translating tendency at the hover. The landing gear was also tilted to the left so that the rotor will still be level when the aircraft was on the ground, making the rest of the airframe tilt to the left. The tail was also asymmetrical to give a side force at speed, thus unloading the tail rotor. In a speed banking turn at slower air speeds, the low wing can lose lift while it is maintained on the upper wing, resulting in an excessive roll. This is countered by increasing forward air speed to increase lift on the lower wing. Because of this characteristic and the aircraft size and weight, it is not easily maneuverable. Therefore, they usually attack in pairs or multiple pairs and from various directions. The helicopter was used extensively in the Afghanistan war, becoming the signature weapon of the conflict. Combat experience quickly demonstrated the disadvantages of having the Mi-24 carrying troops. Gunship crews prefer to fly lightly loaded anyway, especially given the operations from high ground altitude in Afghanistan. The Mi-24 troop compartment armor was often removed to reduce weight. Troops will be carried in Mi-8 helicopters while the Mi-24s provided fire support. It also proved useful to carry a technician in the Mi-24's crew compartment to handle a light machine gun in the window port. This gave the crew some ability to watch its back while leaving a target area. In some cases, a light machine gun was fitted on both sides to allow the technician to move from one side to the other without having to take the machine gun with him. Now besides protecting helicopter troops, assaults and supporting ground actions, the Mi-24 is also protected convoys using rockets with fletchet warheads to drive off ambushes. It also performs strikes on prey designated targets and engage in hunter-killer sweeps. The Hind operated in pairs 
We were more often in groups of 4 or 8 to provide mutual fire support. As a combination of armored gunship and troop transport, the Mi-24 has no direct NATO counterpart. The closest western equivalent was the Sikorsky S-67 Black Hawk, which used many of the same design principles and was also billed as a high-speed, high-agility attack helicopter with limited troop transport capability, using many components from the existing Sikorsky S-61. The S-67, however, was never adopted for service. Other Western equivalents are the Romanian Army's IAR-330, which is a license-built arm version of the aerospatial SA-330 Puma, and also the MH-60 Direct Action Penetrator, a special-purpose arm variant of the Sikorsky UH-60 Black Hawk. You can check more information about the Hein on our channel as we keep up with the latest news from the CS world for this upcoming module. So if you are excited for the release of both the Apache Longbow and the Hein, tell us which one you will rather fly first and why. Leave a comment down below with your answer and if you find the video informative, leave us a like as it helps the YouTube algorithm and subscribe for more information and news from your favorite simulators and games. I am Andre Celesti, reminding you to fly safe and I'll see you next time.